So we are building bike generator number two. This one is for the Lancashire Wildlife Trust. Uh, they saw our videos, Andy Mather at Lancashire Wildlife Trust saw our videos and thought one of those will go really well in our eco project. So he's asked if we could build one. So I can't, do, I can't turn down a project like that. So here we go. Uh, we're trying to use as much reused and recycled bits as possible because uh, that's part of the ethos of it really. Um, so we've got a bike. Now this bike uh, was literally at the side of the road with a note saying take it for free if you want it. It's pretty knackered. Um, the back wheel was really buckled but I've managed to true that up so it looks like we can, we can make this work. Now a lot of this as you can see is just really badly damaged but um, not to worry for a bike generator you don't need a perfect bike as long as the drivetrain works and I can make this drivetrain work so it's all good so we're going to reuse this bike if you're building your own uh, not ideal to have a suspension bike uh, better to have a rigid back end and it's also better to have road bars uh, drop handle bars just because you've got more hand positions than when you're riding but it doesn't matter this was free so you know let's do it uh, we're going to tighten this up so that it doesn't bob Right, uh, here's the rest of the, the main rest of the bits that we're going to use. We've got a uh, battery, 12 volt lead acid, 7 amp hour, um, it's about the right size uh, for what we need. We've got a switch, this has been taken off another project, so we've got this spare switch knocking about, so we're going to use that. This is the inverter we're going to use. Now, this is really handy actually because um, it's got the DC 12 volt in there from the alternator, uh, but it's got USB outputs, it's got 240 volt mains outputs, and it's got some pass through 12 volt car socket outputs. Um, so, what this does is it makes it really flexible and it means we don't have to do a load of wiring um, ourselves basically. I can wire the alternator and battery into that and we can take everything else off there so it's really versatile and easy and it's even got a little built-in voltmeter there which is what we need 12 volt fan this is a new part um, couldn't find a second hand fan at short notice so we've got this one we have an alternator so this is actually taken off a, a Fiat 500 um, it's a refurbished alternator so it's basically uh, it's done some miles but it's all right um, nice and smooth it's got a pulley on there so that's good it's a K section pulley so that uh, that goes with the belt that we've got for it various bits of cable and stuff uh, from other projects and some house wiring that I've taken apart so we're just going to reuse that and here we've got um, a magnetic trainer stand without the magnetic trainer bit and this is what we're going to put the bike in uh, so we're going to clamp it in there um, but we're going to rig up the alternator to do that uh, and for the base we've got various bits of wood we've always got bits of wood knocking about from projects and housework type things DIY stuff so um, we're going to re all the wood will be reused from scratch so first thing to do is get the bike in working order get the bike ready then we're going to set the plinth up and build it up. Let's do it. Raining, so we've had to move inside. Um, workshops full, so I've had to take over the living room. 
such is life. Quick word on the alternator. Um, if you're wondering which way round to position the alternator, as in which way to turn it, it doesn't matter for generation. It's an alternating current generator. It will generate current in either direction. Um, but it will only cool properly in one direction. And you can see that. If you see the fan blades inside, you can tell here that this one should be moving this way. Uh, and that's because it's going to push the air outwards and that will cool it properly. Now, in reality on a bike generator you don't need to worry too much about cooling. Um, so if it isn't obvious don't worry about it because you're not going to put it under that much stress on a bike generator. Um, but it's worth doing it right in it. alternator there it's a Denso alternator out of a Fiat 500 um, that's that's wired into the battery which is down at the front 
Uh, we've got the stand uh, set up there. Uh, that's off a magnetic trainer, as I said at the beginning, but we've, we've taken all the gubbins off there. Tire removed from the rear wheel. We've still got the rim tape in the wheel. That's still in there. Uh, and this is a K-section belt, which I bought to fit, because I knew what the dimensions were going to be. We've got a block there. I haven't bolted this down. We've got a block here. Um, and the reason for that is so you can put a different bike in it and move it slightly forward or slightly back to get the belt tension. Otherwise, you've got to be undoing bolts and stuff like that. This, this way, you can just put uh, an extra bit of MDF or something down there to, to space it out. Um, and it also means you can just lift this off to transport it because I'll be taking this down to the Wildlife Trust project tomorrow. So I'll have to take it apart to do that. So it makes it portable, which is which is a good thing. Uh, got a little block there that we put on at the end. That just stops people standing on the uh, on the cables when they when they get on the bike. So this is the main power output from the alternator. That's wired into a junction box there. Um, there's a fuse you can see on the battery there. That's a seven amp hour battery. So we've got a six amp fuse on there, and you'll see there's another fuse there. And that is a 10 amp and that's for the main power. So that comes from the alternator and also from the battery fuse there. This is for the uh, field coil for the alternator. So this is effectively the ignition uh, as it will be in a car. So that goes, that goes just to get the alternator going. And that's wired up here along with the main power output uh, up into the switch. So we've got a main power switch there. And this switches the battery into the circuit. It switches the power into the circuit and it also connects the battery to the field coil on the alternator to get it going. So this acts like an ignition switch and the main power switch all in one. Now on our bike generator, our main bike generator, our home office one, we've got a whole array of switches and we all those all those things are separate. And that's because it's that's a pretty advanced unit and we use it for training and we want it as as uh, flexible as possible but what we were aiming for here is simplicity because this is going to be used by lots of different people who are coming to the project um, not all of whom are au fait with electrics or electronics so uh, we wanted it nice and simple so we've got one switch does it all there now this comes down into a, an inverter uh, I'm just shining a torch because the light's not good in here because it's gone dark so you see the main power comes there into the inverter uh, we've got some USB sockets, outputs there, a couple of 240 volts and in the bottom there you can see we've got these uh, car type sockets and I've got a 12 volt thing plugged into there. And this, um, this is hanging loose, this is a fan uh, that we've got set up there and that's uh, absolutely essential on a bike generator to keep cool gets very sweaty when you're riding indoors and I believe this is going in the greenhouse so um, we're definitely going to need this fan. Um, so what we should find is when we switch the power on, I'm just going to unplug this fan. The reason I've left this wire loose in case it's bugging you because it will bug me, you can see everything else is really neat and this is dangling down. The reason for that is it's a clip fan so they can put it where they want, put it on the handlebars if they want to do that or they can move it around so um, I've just left it, left it like that. So what happens is we can switch this on and what it'll do is it'll run the inverter from the battery. First of all, if we're not pedalling the alternator, it'll just run it from the battery. So that noise you can hear there is the fan. It's got a fan built in there to cool down. So you see it's reading 12.4 volts. That's the battery voltage at the moment. Uh, and that's the AC voltage in these sockets. So that's what it's putting out in these sockets. Uh, and you'll see the little little bulb on there. That's that's telling us that there's power to the field coil on the alternator if we want to start generating power. So let's give it a go. Alrighty. So uh, plug the fan in. Got that plugged in. Uh, and I've also plugged a phone in there just so you can see it charging. We can see it happening. Uh, okay, so we're going to get on. You see it spins, so what we need to do is start pedalling, uh, get the alternator up to speed before we put the power on. 
if you don't do that, it, you get this kind of sinusoidal variation in force. It's very difficult to get it up to speed then. Um, so we start pedaling and then we switch the power on. And what you should see when we switch the power on is the devices start working, so the phone should start charging and the fan should come on. And you'll also see the voltage will initially read 12.4, the battery voltage, and it should go up to 13.8, uh, 13.9, something like that, which is the alternator power output. I forgot to switch the fan back on. There we go. It's a little breeze from that actually. So there you go, so we're powering these devices, we're charging the phone, we're powering the fan, and we're just powering the inverter as well. And we could plug other stuff in there uh, if we wanted to do that. Um, Power a laptop, no problem. Power another phone as well. All good, works. And then to stop, we just switch off and stop pedaling. There we go. So everything working as it should. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel for more content. We've got loads of bike generator stuff. So if you want to know how the wiring diagram looks for this specifically, we've got a video on wiring diagrams. Uh, we've got a video on our home office, well we've got several videos on our home office generator, which is a pretty advanced unit. It's got a lot more stuff on than this. A capacitor, different circuits, a high current circuit, a pulse width regulator. Uh, so check that out, have a look. Uh, there'll be some links in the description below. And uh, if you want us to build your bike generator, let us know. It's not something we were ever planning on doing. Um, I don't know what capacity we've got to do it because obviously our main uh, focus at Systemic Creative is organisational development, consultancy and that kind of thing. We don't build generators as a rule, but this has been fun. It's been really cool. So uh, if you want one, give us a shout. That's all for now. Thanks.